we're announcing the largest rewards in the state's history for information leading to the arrest or conviction for unsolved murders of children in South Australia. This will involve 13 cases involving 18 children with rewards of up to $1 million. And four of these rewards of $1 million will be offered for the first time. We want to attract people to come forward to reveal what they know. Even the smallest piece of information can lead to a chain of inquiry which can lead to an arrest of the perpetrator or indeed information, crucial information, that might allow us to understand the final resting place for these children. All of those matters, if we can actually solve these crimes and bring the perpetrators to justice, or if we can even understand what happened so that we can identify the final resting place of these children, will be an enormous sense of comfort to the families that are affected. Now, as you can appreciate, there are a range of families that uh, have been involved in these matters. All of them have been contacted before we've made this decision. All of these decisions have been made uh, on the recommendation of the Commissioner for Police. And in a moment I'll ask Assistant Commissioner Paul Dixon to explain the way in which these rewards operate, the reason why they're being advanced at this time, and the scope uh, of what the rewards uh, may allow us to uncover. But at this time I would like to invite uh, Susie Ratcliffe uh, to say a little about what the offer of this set of rewards means to her family and other families like her. Susie, if you could come forward. Thank you. Um, firstly, I'd like to, to thank everyone um, that's been involved in this. This is... Um, it's a, a major significant change for for my family and, and for other families that have lost their children. Um, if this helps the vital clue to bringing our girls home or you know, other children, then that's all that matters. Um, living day by day, not knowing where our children are, is it's incomprehensible. It's a pain no one should ever have to endure. My family have missed out on seeing my, my sister grow up, go to school, all the different highs and lows of her life, getting married and having children of her own. Um, my parents had to lose a child that, you know, you never believe that you're going to, to lose a child. You always believe your children are going to bury you. And to lose a child to ill health, it's, it's something that, you know, it's, it's painful, but you can at least bury them and you can grieve for them properly. But not having a body to bury and to actually grieve for her properly. Sorry. Just take your time. I'm sorry. This reward could mean the answers that my family and so many other families have been waiting for for so long. And I just appeal to those out there that may have those answers, please find it within your heart to ring Crime Stoppers and put an end to our pain. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Assistant Commissioner. In 2013, the Major Crime Investigation Branch solved two very important murder investigations. That was Louise Bell and Karen Williams. Louise Bell was uh, murdered in 1983 and Karen Williams in 1991. Many people in the community would have thought that due to the age of those two investigations that we would have never came to a position to apprehend anybody. The good work and the information provided by the community 
brought us to be able to apprehend two people for those two serious offences. The rewards today, which we're talking about, will provide us with further investigative opportunities to actually hopefully bring, bring about the arrest of further offenders for the most serious offences which are committed in this state and at the same time hopefully provide the information that we require so that we can bring the remains of some of these children which have been taken from their families and bring them back to their families. What we do know as, investiga in, as investigators is that over time relation relationships, loyalties between people break down. And we know that on, in, some, in some cases that these matters, there's a small group of people that have got vital information that can be provided to the police to assist in those matters being solved. And we believe that rewards of this nature will provide the inducement to actually allow some of these people to come forward and actually provide that very important information. We know that many cases are solved by that small piece of information which comes to us and there's no difference between the matters which we're talking about today and the, and the matters of either Williams or Bell. And it's also very important to know that when people do provide information to us, they can provide that, that information anonymously. If they want to, if they want to um, apply for a reward, obviously that information can't remain anonymous, but we can work with those individuals and speak about their concerns which they may have and come to a position where the Reward Evaluation Committee, which is part of the South Australian Police, then provides a recommendation to government about the payment of a, re of a reward. We have paid rewards previously for murders and um, this is no different to what we've done um, historically. So what I do really emphasise for the people out there who believe they do have information to really think about the information that they've got and bring that to, to us through Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Any questions? There's probably two parts to that to that answer. Is that rewards do work? Yes, but most um, community members are, are quite happy to assist police without a reward. And you'll find that's what that's why we have such, such a successful Crime Stoppers. But when you're talking about people who may be involved in a, a criminal group or with people who have committed the most serious crimes, you need for them to, to, to provide that reward. Often they need a bit of inducement to do that. And that's why the position of $1 million is a fair inducement for those people to come forward. Because they will have concerns about their own, they may have concerns about their personal safety or, or their relationships with others. So we need to actually assist them to be able to come forward, and that's what part of the $1 million reward is about. And some, some of the rewards have been lifted to significant amounts? Yes, they've gone from 100000 to $200,000 up to a $1 million. Is that the first time that has happened? For, it is a significant jump, and the reason for that is to, as I've spoken about the loyalty, the relationship, you know, that's a, an inducement we're looking for, for people that um, who may have that information. It's, it's unlikely that your, um, your general community members will have this specific information. It's more likely than not that the people will, that will have this information and that can provide this assistance are involved some way or, or close to the offenders. So we need to actually target that group of people. Where does the money come from? From government. And do you Yeah, this, uh, this is something that can be managed within the existing resources of the budget. So obviously it's drawn down. There are a substantial number of uh, rewards at any one point of time that are, uh, are current, uh, but they're only drawn down, obviously, as information is provided, subject to the rewards evaluation panel recommendations to government. So we do have some information about the rate at which those rewards uh, have been paid out. But this amounts to the largest 
uh, rewards uh, of its type uh, for these uh, child abduction murders. I think there's one other case where there was a, a million dollar reward offered. Uh, but uh, in relation to these matters, uh, these are new in four cases uh, covering um, a substantial number of children and uh, we hope they're going to be successful in allowing us to get the information necessary to ensure justice is done in these cases. Perhaps um, I might, in a general sense, the recommendations that we have from the Commissioner is what Government has acted upon. So uh, we act on the uh, expert advice we have from the Commissioner for Police about um, what will assist him in investigating and solving crime. So that's the perspective from Government. And, and I understand the particular uh, motivation for the police, uh, as has already been explained, is that uh, Obviously, after 40 years, a number of these crimes um, will be reaching critical phases uh, of their uh, development. It may be that there are opportunities presented by a crime that reaches this particular phase, as uh, the Assistant Commissioner mentioned, the breaking down of relationships that creates opportunities. So, as it was explained to me, um, while time can actually work against the solving of crime, it can actually also work in favour of the solving of crime as uh, long-standing relationships break down, as people become uh, less fearful of reprisal, information could emerge that could lead to the uh, solving of a crime. Of course, we're also getting into a critical phase in terms of people's recollections and also even just the longevity of some of the witnesses. People may have moved into state or overseas or they might be in nearing the end of their life. A reward of this size, though, is uh, a life-changing reward. And I'm sure the message about this will get out uh, far and wide, including interstate, where some of the information may reside. Any other questions? So 13 cases, the ones that are set out in the material that we give you, uh, involving 18 children, will all have uh, million dollar awards. Uh, four of those million dollar awards will be struck for the first time, so there isn't a reward in those cases. In other cases, some of them have gone from $200,000 up to a million dollars. Are there any of those crimes that the police you know, the chances that are closer to solving than others? We have conducted reviews on all of these, these crimes and we do have investigative opportunities and we have persons of interest as well that we're, we're looking at but we don't have enough to go to the director of public prosecutions to actually put a charge. So we're, what we're hoping is that this could be the tipping point to provide that bit of information we need to actually be able to ap apprehend people for these offences. So some of them we do have um, suspects for, others we don't, um, but this is all part of the provision of investigative opportunities and that's what we hope that we'll, we'll gain from this reward. Yes. It's always been our belief that uh, there's, there's more than one person involved in that murder. So um, that's, that's why it's very important to actually look at all the opportunities we may have.